Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Today is the beginning of free agent frenzy. Um, it's going to be kicking off in about 45 minutes from now. We're going to go live with all of the rumors and things that are going to be going on, of course. Don't expect a whole lot for the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to have to live vicariously through others. So there's that. But here's where this is one of those things that's kind of interesting. Now that Russell Wilson has signed with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, that they literally paid him to go away. They're paying him basically $39 million the next two years on the cap, roughly. It's going to be, depending on how they, they adjust it, it'll probably be a June 1st uh, trade or uh, cut or whatever you want to call it. But they're going to be basically taking about ninety million, excuse me, $80 million of dead money over the next two years. How you split it up doesn't matter. They traded Jerry Judy uh, for a fifth and a sixth to the Cleveland Browns. And you have Corton Sutlin, Corton Sutlin, who came into the league in 2018, who has, uh, over the last three years with issues at quarterback, has had 776 yards, 829 yards, and 772. It was thought that him and Jerry Judy were going to end up being this great tantum of wide receivers. And you can look, go back to 2019 where he had um, 1,112 yards. Um, clearly, the change in coaching um, has a lot to do with uh, what's happened as far as his career has gone now. And now that uh, Jerry Judy has been traded, he's posted a few things on Instagram and stuff. You know, the Fresh Pence uh, pic where there's nobody around and no furniture and stuff. He's posted a picture of Jerry Judy as well um, that literally is, now y'all are playing with my emotions at this point. And he definitely does not like seeing what he has been seeing happening on the team with his teammates going. And here's the thing about Sean Payton. Sean Payton is the alpha dog there. And you are going to do things my way. And with him being disgruntled and with the Denver Broncos basically looking to hit the reset button, which you can honestly look at, at it and say they have, this is one of the last pieces of the team that has a big contract on it. And you could see them maybe wanting to move on with him. Now, at this point, Corton Sutland's uh, contract, it's a $17 million cap hit this year and next year, but no money on that's guaranteed. Now, I can't tell you exactly how it works out on that, but if we're going to go ahead, now just, just bear with me here for a second. Michael Gallup is a $13 million cap hit this year, okay? By releasing him, which they will do before Sunday, um, you'll basically save $9.5 million on this year. What we're talking about is double the production of what Michael Gallup has done and a guy who definitely may be wanting to do some, do some things. Now, what you may be able to do is trade for him at a fire sale rate. It was a fifth and a sixth. Let's say it is a fifth round that you can trade for Court and Sutton. Court and Sutton, that's not a bad deal. Now, you know, I've been one that has wanted to get Stefan Diggs here. Stefan Diggs is about another $10 million a year, and Stefan Diggs is a few years older. And I will say that, um, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, Corton Sutton um, has not had the baggage that Stefan Diggs kind of has, where Stefan kind of worked his way out of Minnesota, and maybe he regretted that going to Buffalo. And you can see that he is already looking and saying, you know, I kind of kind of not happy with what's going on here. You've seen chinks in the armor. Now, that's not to say that he wouldn't like to play in Dallas with his brother. I think that would actually probably, you know, soothe the savage soul. I would say playing in Dallas versus in Buffalo, there's a lot more things that you can do and being able to get the attention that he craves, he would definitely like it. The question would be is, would the Cowboys consider making a trade for Court and Sutton since they know Sean Payton? You would have to believe that the relationship that they have may <coughs> play in their favor. Sean Payton wants to get rid of a dis disgruntled employee 
and he wants to install all of the things that he wants to do. This is a redshirt season for him. If he can get extra draft picks, get rid of a cap hit, get himself some more money so that way he can reset the system, then they're in better shape. Now, let's, let's be clear here. What Denver did, it's not all Russell Wilson as being the problem. Russell Wilson, quite frankly, here's the thing that the misnomer is. The last year, Russell Wilson, his first year there was terrible. But surprisingly, if you look at Denver in the play that he had this year, his numbers are almost identical to Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield gets a $115 million contract. Russell Wilson gets gets trade, uh, excuse me, gets cut. Gets cut. So the, there's perception and there's reality. You know, Baker Mayfield is now looked upon as a great quarterback. Well, Baker Mayfield, um, l- let me tell you how close it was. Russell Wilson played in 15 games. Baker Mayfield played in 17. Um, Baker Mayfield had a 9-8 and eight record. Uh, Russell Wilson had a 7-8. and eight. Russell Wilson had a 66.4% completion percentage. Uh, Baker Mayfield had a 64, a lower one. Now, Baker Mayfield did have 1,000 y- uh, yards more, but he did play in two more games. Yard average, 6.9 Russell Wilson, 7.1 Baker Mayfield. Uh, TD passes. Baker Mayfield had 28. Russell Wilson, with two less games, had 26. Interceptions. Baker Mayfield had 10. Russell Wilson had 8. Rating. Russell Wilson, 98. Um, Baker Mayfield, 94. So it's not that he literally dropped off a cliff and couldn't play. Russell Wilson's numbers are actually pretty good in the grand scheme of things. Is he the same player that he was years ago, especially when they had the Legion of Boom? No. But he, by far, is not the worst quarterback in football. Be that as it may, they are starting over. And this is an opportunity for the Cowboys to maybe get a good trade. And if you're telling me that we could take maybe a fifth-round draft pick and get Court and Sutton here and put Court and Sutton with um, Brandon Cooks and CeeDee Lamb, or even if you're looking and saying, we don't want to pay that much, there is a possibility that you could... Um, trade Brandon Cooks or cut Brandon Cooks. And let me look at his contract here real quick. Um, his cap hit. Computer slow this morning. Maybe because it's cold. But Brandon Cooks is, I think, um, a $10 million cap hit. Boy, why are we taking forever to... To open okay Brandon Cooks is a 10 million dollar cap hit for this year if uh, the Cowboys cut him we could save four million dollars right I'm just saying hypothetically if they trade him same thing you would take a six million dollar cap hit um, I for one am, am on the bandwagon of saying this would be an all-in type move I would hold on to Brandon Cooks and say I've got Sutton I got CD and I've got Cooks there who will be in a second season with the Cowboys in this offense and I've got now my wide receiver core going crazy and we're only looking at saying you know that's seven million dollars more and I don't know how the numbers would work out with Denver I think Denver would eat some of that contract but that would be a major upgrade for your wide receivers and if you go out and get Derrick Henry oh man then you can go into the draft and look and say, we're going to dress, draft the best offensive lineman at 24 and work on our defense from that point. And to me, that's an all-in move that's not, not that expensive. All right, good people, we'll be doing, uh, going live here in about 30 minutes, and we'll be discussing things like this. And I hope to see you guys there. Peace.